Welcome back to the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today, I have the privilege of talking to Danny Sullivan. Danny Dimes, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Danny is a varsity member of the Dover Sherburne football, basketball, and baseball team. He's been a star all uh, fall for this historic season uh, as quarterback at Dover Sherburne High School. Um, really quick, before we start the show, I want to thank our official sponsor, the Young Shakespeare Podcast, Bank of America. Um, use the code Young Shakespeare at checkout the next time you're refinancing a home equity loan for a favorable rate. Thank you to Bank of America for sponsoring the show. Danny, tell me a little bit about this season. It's been absolutely electric. Yeah, it's been awesome. I think also like going into the season, this wasn't really as expected as it was. And like winning all of these games is just like surreal for all of us because Dover Sherman football hasn't really been like big, big football town. So it's just been super fun. And then we, we just keep winning, winning. And we've also hit some blocks in the road, but we just like right after we just work harder in practice, keep going. And it's just super fun because all the guys are loving it. And it's all such a good environment. And I think everyone's having a blast. I'm glad you touched on the sentiment of the surprise factor of the season, because I think you especially can speak to, you know, Grady Russo was the varsity quarterback last year. You stepped into this role. There was a lot of buzz around you, a lot of positive things being said, but no one really knew that you would pan out in this sort of fantastic of a way of this in fashion. So how would you describe sort of those early weeks and sort of the buzz around you and, and how you took that? Yeah, I think it was like kind of a lot of pressure in the beginning because in the summers when we're supposed to be practicing with the team, I'm playing a lot of baseball, so I don't really have that much time to play with the team. So they're also going in and not get like not knowing that I can play quarterback. And then um, in like eighth grade and then last like ninth grade and 10th grade, I was behind behind a lot of people. So no one really like saw me play and they didn't have like too much confidence in me. So I just think the beginning of the season, I think I put in a lot of work and like training with the receivers and stuff to like build the confidence that we had like going into the season. So I think that was big. And then last year being behind Grady, it was tough because I didn't really play quarterback that much because I was on defense all year. So like it was just everyone was kind of going and guessing if, if I was going to be good or not. Right. And what would you say was the first game that you really got to show off your stuff? You know, the Western game, it was a way and maybe it wasn't as many people. But where do you think really your introduction to the DS community was? Um, I think it was probably the Nimok game because it was like pretty close. It was a pretty, we came into the game, like thinking that they were going to be really good and they were pretty good. But I think that's like, that was our statement game and we came up pretty strong. We finished pretty strong. And that's when like when the defense, we could see the defense really play against them an offense that was better than Weston at the time. But yeah, so I think that was probably the statement game that like gave everyone hope. Is that the game you're most proud of, or does another one stick out to you? Um, I'd say the game I'm most proud of is probably, probably, I'd say Millis, because just for me, that was the most clean game of the, of the year. Mm. There's a lot of games that thrown some picks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the Millis game, that was like, I just focused on completing my passes even though the score wasn't super close and we could have won scoring one touchdown. Um, it was just, I was making some good decisions and getting good reads. I'd love to go back to the Bellingham game a little bit, as much as you probably don't and ask you a little bit about that. What do you think went wrong for the Raiders in that one? Cause obviously, you know, Bellingham has been a tough team the last few years but yeah. been beatable. You know, they took losses uh, after they played you guys. So what do, you, what do you think went wrong for the Raiders that day? I think we're, I think we're, um, I know we're good now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Going into the game, I just thought, well, we had like not super high expectations of them because last year they beat us. Then we came in like, thinking that it was going to be a tough game, but wasn't going to be as tough as last year because they lost a lot of seniors. So, so I just think coming to the game, like play, while playing in the game, they had, they put a lot of pressure 
on me, like being a quarterback, because I think they they didn't see me last year, so they they didn't they I was like a new quarterback, so they gave a lot of pressure. They hit, hit me a few times, and I just think like my focus wasn't really there. And I, I also with the defense, like they, that quarterback is he's a really good quarterback, and he was kind of he was leading their whole offense, and they didn't have like the offense that they had last year. So I just think like all their all their things were clicking that game and we had made many mistakes and we weren't as focused as we should have been. So that was a tough loss. And how did you guys come out of that? Obviously a, a fat winning streak after that. What did you take away from that game like as a team and what did you take away from it personally as the quarterback? Yeah, as a team, we just took it like we can't take anyone lightly, even if they're even if they're bad and the record doesn't show it or they're really good. Like after after Bellingham, if, I think maybe two games after we played Medway. And at the beginning of the season, we always thought they were like super good. Then the record was like all right. But we, we had to prepare super well for that game because we just had to be focused and we couldn't do what we did against Bellingham. So we were so focused on that game and winning that game. And I think we executed a lot better that game. I think that's what we did for the um, games following the Bellingham game. Mm. What are some of the unique challenges of playing quarterback? Um, I'd say, like, I'd say it's challenging knowing all the plays. But once you do it a while, it comes easier. Um, but for me, the most challenging thing is, like, progressions passing. Because I always have, like, pre-snap read, and you can't always throw it to that guy every time before before you snap the ball. Mm -hmm. I think that's, like, the most challenging thing for me because you're focused on the guy, and it's it's hard to see the guys on the other side of the field, even if they're wide open, and you're focused on one side of the field. And, like, it's always – it's a lot of trust in your line, which I we I'm pretty aligned this year. But I still think it's, it's it's pretty challenging just going on one side, waiting, and then changing your um, view of sight and going to the other side of the field and making that throw. Right. Yeah, and you it, you know there's such a small amount of time that you have in the pocket too, yeah. um, and people running at you trying to take your head off. Um, so I definitely it's just such a such a tough position to see. Have you taken any really hard hits? Like, what's the hardest hit that you think you remember for all season? Um, hardest hit I took was against Bellingham, and I I got the wind knocked out of me, and my <laughs> my elbow was hurting a little bit. But and then I, and then I was like Coach Ryan, and I was like Coach Ryan was like freaking out because my arm my arm was like up because it was it felt like it was a bruise, and I was like <sighs> like heavily breathing, and then he's like you need to, you need a sub, and I'm like no. <laughs> I could not go out. Wait, your arm was up? Could you explain that a little bit more? My arm was like up here because it like he, he hit my elbow really hard and got like it felt like it like bru it was like heavy bruise, but then I decided to like move it around a little bit and then it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's tough. I mean, um Treme tremendous even with like a tremendous line like that's gonna happen like even the best you know nfl lines are gonna give up huge hits on the quarterback and stuff but you got to have that grit um what's up with the hair i was wondering that you growing it out oh, yeah i have i i don't know why i started growing it out but it was like last march i didn't cut it till like maybe three weeks ago and my aunt's like a hairdresser so she like trimmed it up a little bit but you can't even tell so i don't really know what i'm gonna do with it i was maybe thinking like a mullet against medfield oh that mullet. was ruthless yeah and my cousin's like he's a bar he's a barber so maybe get him get you, him to get me a mullet. a bunch of, have you discussed that with any of the other guys do you think you get a whole squad to get the mullet for medfield i think i, I think i could get the whole squad to get a mullet <laughs> if I was gonna want it, I think I could convince a lot of people to get one. Be the quarterback, yeah. You got to be a leader, even if it's you know a dumb haircut. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought up Medfield. What are you expecting out of this Thanksgiving Day game? Um, I think we can't take it lightly because it's Thanksgiving. You never know. 
even the record doesn't really like show who they are. I don't think they're as strong as they were last year or a few previous years, but I think they can definitely like, give us a run for our money. I do think we are the like we have more depth in all our positions. We're just like a more stronger team. Mm-hmm. But I think well, I think we'll yeah, I think it's gonna be it'll be a good game, but it, it won't be too easy. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, have you got a chance to look over any actual like medfield film? Like what have you seen? Yeah, we watched the we watched a little bit of medfield film in practice. Um I saw they had like a I don't know if it was a kick return touchdown or punt return touchdown against Sharon. So that was a that was a pretty good play. Um and then they also blew out Sharon like 35-0. And they've had a like a few close games. Um so I think I think they can play, but we'll see on Thanksgiving. Sharon has just been like the whipping boy. <laughs> Sharon is just like getting killed by everyone. Yeah, they're at the boxing bag. Everyone's punching in the, in the it's face. It's like Medfield's first win, and they win by 35 points. Like, how does that feel, I Sharon? I yeah. mean, I don't know what you tell yourself, but like that's that's tricky. That's a that's a that's a tough position to be in. Um, because I know you yeah. guys did a similar similar outcome. I think it's 42-0. Mm-hmm. I think. I so, wonder how many of you guys yeah, could have scored. I wonder if that could have been like 80 to nothing if you just kept the starting O in and you ran past plays like deep. Yeah, I think we I think we could have. And I also think Weston, it could have been 80 to zero. Because <laughs> the six points we gave up against Weston are we had a lot of subs in on defense, like first time playing subs. So this is gonna be your first time uh playing quarterback on Thanksgiving. Is there any like pressure or is it excitement? Cause obviously I don't know if your family's coming into town, like your extended family, there'll be a lot of like alumni that I'm sure you, you know, used to be like varsity guys when you were a freshman, like, you know, is this, is this a big deal to you? Like what's your mindset like going into like just the atmosphere of Thanksgiving? Yeah. I think this is a huge deal for me because, because I'm like, it's my first year playing quarterback for the varsity team. So I, I don't really – I there's a lot of pressure on me, but I don't really feel too much pressure. Like, I think I was feeling more pressure against Norton before that game for the TBL championship. Um, so, like, that was really big. And then and then against Watertown, there's a, there's a lot of pressure, and especially Swam Scott. But I think, yeah, there's a lot of pressure, and I just got to – I just got to – I think I got to prepare a lot for this game even though it seems like it could be a, like a pretty different like score because their record and our record, but I'm not going to take this lightly. Right. I'd love to see you run one in personally. Like if you just drop back and then just like an 80 yard run or something like that, I think, yeah. I, think I think it's your turn to get into I, I did like it. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Definitely the game to do that. Yeah. There's nothing to lose last game of the season. How do you like the prospect of having your senior year of Thanksgiving be at Medfield? How do you feel about that? I personally like playing at Medfield because I because we we're close to we're right next to them. We got a lot of fans there. And I just think like the environment is really good because beating the home team is just some is just a it's a slightly better feeling than winning on your I don't know if it's winning on your home turf, but it's like winning on their turf just feels so good sometimes. So like my sophomore year, that was that game was pretty good, even though it was on Thanksgiving. Being my field was that was pretty awesome at their turf. Yeah, I hate for people that have regularly watched this, I hate repeating this anecdote, but I think it's a it's a good one. Peter Michalowski once said. Uh, he was glad to have his senior year at Medfield because if you win, you get to take pictures all over their field while they sob. Yeah. So that, you know, if, if that's any consolation, anyone that wants to play at DS, I guess, you know what I mean? 
Um, yeah. Both both great places to play for sure. Um, have you been able to like practice at all for basketball? I feel like you've probably been pretty busy, but have you got any shots up? Um, I have like a basketball. I have a little basketball court at my house, so after practices, I I take probably like thirty shots like twice a week. But it's I think it's a lot really tough because it's a lot of homework, like football, and you gotta watch film for every game you play. Comb so your not, hair. Yeah, comb. <laughs> just uh, so I haven't had too much time, but like now, now until basketball tryouts is is like the time to do it. So I gotta get going like right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna show up. Just so I, that would suck. You'd be like, I mean, I guess you've got a good excuse, but like, and then probably with yeah. baseball and stuff too. All summer, like you said, it's probably been pretty hard to train. Like, what do you think the outlook is for the baseball – or, sorry, for the basketball season, for DS? Do you like do you like the way the team looks? Do you think you guys will be a contender at the TVL level, at the state level? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I don't really know. I don't – we have, like, a decent amount of depth. We have, we have kids that can play. Um, like, like, Luke is a really good player, and I think he's got a really good chance to get in the TVL, like, award. Um. Zach is a really good point guard. He leads the team. He's a good scorer. They're both good scorers. And then we have Ethan, who's a uh, center captain. Those are all three of the captains. Then we got some um, sophomores going to fill in some big shoes from the seniors that left last year. So I think I think we can do some damage in the TVL, and I think we have pretty good chances of winning. Have you heard of Rogers Boylan? No, I haven't. Have you heard of um, Mark Seisler? No. Have you <laughs> have you heard of Eric Levine? Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering when the most like like the the furthest quarterback back in DS history. I was gonna go all the way through. I was gonna be like Holden Ferrari, Kirby Ryan, Grady. Yeah, no, Holden. yeah. You know Holden. I mean, I guess he's the, he's like the another just guy that does it all with baseball and stuff. Salve. He went to Salve, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think Johnny will kill me if I got the order wrong, but I think uh, I think it went Rogers, then Mark Seisler. It might have gone Will Scatcherd. Yeah, Johnny's always telling me – he was telling me, like, I think he went back for, like, a long time doing that list before. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's just yeah. such a dork. I think everyone he – knows, He knows so much about DS history. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it kind of, like, humiliating to be like him? Yeah, he is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I know. If any, if he wasn't good too, we could just all ignore him. Like even even me as his brother. Like I'm just a big yeah. clock chaser though, so I'm gonna keep him involved in what I'm doing. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, Luke, Ethan Lynch, Zach Spellman, Brian. I mean, is it's funny too? Brian coming into football. Oh yeah. What is what is that meant? I mean, like. Did you expect him to be this good? I think there was there was another guy that there was hype around. Like I remember when I was jogging on the track, seeing him run routes. I was like, "Oh, that kid's fucking big! Like he yeah. should be a good football player." But I didn't expect him to be like this. Yeah, I don't think anyone expected him to be like this. His first year football players, it's like it's hard. Last year, he was he was a pretty good player, but Brian. It took him like not that. It didn't take him that much time to just get right into it. Mm -hmm. First few games were started off a little shaky, but then as the season goes on, he got so, and he's gonna be so good next year. And when he's a senior, also, right? Is it easier to throw the ball to him? To our team, is he? Is it easier to throw the ball to him just because of you know his catch radius and stuff? Yeah. To throw to him, also his length. Like going on like go routes they're so long. So catching him in stride, I think a little easier to throw it to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what? It, it's funny you were talking earlier about the playbook and how that was one of the challenges was learning all the plays. I meant to ask, what is your favorite? Uh, play call is there a play when it gets called or that you get to come up with and you're just like oh I love this one 
My favorite play. Yeah, favorite play. Um, I like Waggle. I also like, yeah, because I like Waggle. Because I like rolling. I like rolling out and throwing the run. Oh, we also have like a a wham like bootleg pass where I can also go on the run, and then that's when Emilio drags across the field and goes all the way, like tries to catch it like a long ball. And that was also we ran that against Millis, and then Johnny and Emilio ran right into each other. <laughs> 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 and I think I think Johnny got the play a little wrong, but Emilio caught it, and then and Emilio like caught it, and then hit Johnny like down and they both fell and then Emilio got up and like flexed on Johnny. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. I love that. I love that style, man. Emilio, he brings he brings the energy for sure. I loved yeah. when I did my podcast with Emilio that he told me, I was like, oh, do you get involved in trash talk? He's like, oh, not really. And then he goes, but he's like, if a guy like gets a hit on me and they're talking trash, I'll just tell them to hit me harder. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like imagine how freaked out you'd be in football if you like lay a huge hit on someone and they're just begging to get hit harder because there's a lot of scared kids running around. Yeah, definitely. Toughness is a big deal. Do you think, do you think people ever underestimate the toughness of the DS football team? You know, just because they picture you guys walking around mansions with your silk slippers and whatnot. Yeah, I definitely do think they do. And then, like, Medfield, they give us, like, that vibe. Um, <laughs> Norton, and Norton does definitely mill us. So, like, they they would say stuff to you? Yeah, they always say stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the trash talk, like, beyond, like, I don't know if they pull your hair or whatever, but do they ever, <laughs> do they ever do they ever talk shit to you? And like, what kind of stuff do they say to the quarterback? I have not really gotten a lot at all this year. That's I remember like maybe two, and then once it was against Bellingham, I like tripped on my cleat, and this kid came up to me. He's like, "You're gonna trip? You suck!" And like, so just saying that. And then against Swamp Scott, he was just saying I was scared. I just I get a lot of like you're scared and stuff. Are you scared? No, from the D line. <laughs> I'm not scared of a bunch of fat kids. I'll throw and take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take the, I'll take the hit. I'm not like scared of taking the hit. I'd say some sometimes I can sense it and like it just kind of like your instinct to like move a little bit, but. I'm yeah. scared. I'm scared all the time, and I don't even play football. <laughs> so much to be scared of, Daniel. Yeah, there is a ton of – there's tons to be scared of. There's parasites. I know. There's pedestrian crosswalk accidents with automobiles. Yeah. It's like insects. Coronavirus. Insects. Yeah, sometimes those can be the worst. Rather than like – I mean, how often are you going to come across a line? computer to blow up. Yeah, that could. My computer could blow up right now. Um, I saw a mouse outside my complex here. Um, I don't know how that's allowed. It was near a, you know, sewer drain. Granted, but I don't know how it's allowed. I need to tell. I need to call someone on that. Like, like a Karen. Yeah, I'm. I don't like mice at all. It's weird because like, they don't seem like they can hurt you at all. Like they can't hurt you, but just like. <laughs> It's like scary. Yeah, there. I. It's like a human impulse to have like a reaction yeah. to it, and I think it's because they're disease and there's plague historically, so our immune like system has or our nervous system has like a reaction to it. Just like you can you can put a mouse in captivity for like ten generations, and then show it a snake, which it hasn't seen in ten generations, but it will still have a reaction to it because it's so fine into it really DNA. and humans have the same thing we 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 are wary of the serpent yeah, must. we write about it in the bible it's like so when you see a snake dude you see a snake head you jump immediately it's just innate to our human dna that makes a lot of sense yeah and 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 you think you're learning things in school 
that I am the guy that can teach people things. Anyone out there, you're not fucking learning in school. You're learning from me. Yeah, facts. Um, damn, that was a good little tangent. Um, but yeah, there's fear everywhere. Um, what is what are some of the things like you you touched on Millis and Norton, um, even like them having a perception of you guys? I'd love to hear about how that manifests itself manifests itself and like what kind of things they say like maybe not to you. Um, I definitely remember in uh, my podcast with Braden McPhee, he said that the Millis coach makes fun of the DS kids. And alligator says, t-shirts. Yeah. He says that you, you guys wear the alligator t-shirts because he's talking about LaCroix or whatever, I guess yeah. saying, saying you're kind of wimpy kids, but I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah. We always take that as motivation. Like, we're at this, we're at this whole year. We- did um it, they're always like they, they don't think we can like we can hit they think we're just like super soft because we're from Dover and all that stuff but we've hit this year and I think in pat in the past past years we haven't been like all these like rich kids that they always think is says and then when we hear that from other people we take it as like motivation like we're gonna we're gonna prove it on just stuff it down their throats yeah, and if any, anyone that doesn't think you guys can take a hit should look up the Range Rover accident statistics per town. And I bet per capita, teenagers in DS have t- had to take a lot more hits from the dashboard of a Range Rover than other towns. So people should really think about that. Or like Johnny Bennett highlights, and Johnny Bennett clips, and just watch him take every hit and hit everyone. You see against Norton is fucking oh. his punt return. His punt yeah. return that went negative one yards. <laughs> this has been known for a while that he doesn't believe in fair catches, though, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I guess I guess he wants to make something every time. So he just wants to do he just doesn't want to just catch it and be there let's make something happen yeah it's paid off because i don't think he's ever missed a varsity game and now he's at his last one so he hasn't you know you i guess if they don't get hurt i mean if he had gotten hurt it wouldn't have been worth it but because he hasn't that's the kind of guy you want is the person that doesn't believe in fair catches you know as long as they hold on to it essentially yeah even when he doesn't hold on to it he he's had some decent fucking comebacks and and stuff like that if you had to like choose one sport um like that you you could never play again out of the three baseball basketball and football like gun to your flow what are you answering could never play again no banished excommunicated probably basketball but last year it would have been football interesting yeah <clears throat> um last year football was fun but i don't think we we did win all those games we won a lot of games last year but this year just feels like so much more of a real season and then i have so much bigger of a role i'm kind of like fitting into that role a little bit better Last year I was on defense, and I didn't love it as much as I like quarterback. Um, basketball was really fun last year, and it's always been super fun. And it, that used to like be my favorite sport, like interchange with baseball all the time. Mm-hmm. But I just think after this season, that football is just so fun. Not like... <clears throat> Interesting answer. Um, I wanted to bring up um... – the Swamp Scott game, just because I was upset watching it. And I think that you really weren't thinking of me and how that would affect my state of mind on Saturday, uh, you guys losing. Yeah. So I mean, if you could apologize now or maybe just talk about the game, either one. Yeah, going into the game, we knew they were going to be super tough. And that was definitely going to be the hardest game of the year. Um. Like we have Makai and Afosa have friends on Swamp Scott, and they they were talking to them like like week five into the season, 
and they were just telling us how good they were. And we were like, we, we don't care about Swamp Scott. It doesn't even matter. But then coming up to the game, we needed a lot of confidence. And I think everyone like was bringing a lot of confidence to practices and stuff like that. Because to beat them, we really needed to like put out everything. Um, and then I think in like the first first three quarters, we were kind of like shocking them because they didn't they haven't really gotten a ton of competition all year and like their scores have been really like different. Actually, they had a few games that were pretty close, but um, it was pretty close a lot of the game. And then I think too many mistakes towards the end of the game. That was really tough. Tough loss. Right. What do you think? I mean, um, what could you have done differently, if anything? I remember I texted John and he said something to me like, I was like, hey, man, sorry about the loss. And he said something like, we played our hearts out, left it all on the field. Do you think that you gave everything you had to give? Like, can you accept that? Or do you think that there's, moments in your head you play back and you're like fuck I wish I could really redo that I think I think I played my hardest and I don't really have any regrets I don't think I played my cleanest game but I think I played with the most heart that game right what what are some of the surrounding factors that can determine whether you're going to have a good game or not you talk about uh clean games um you talk about pressure, stuff like that. You know, when yeah. do you what, – what's a good indicator that Danny Sullivan's going to have a good game or a bad game? I think it's a lot of, like, um, pre-game, pre-game stuff, like focus. If I'm focused, if I'm, if I'm having fun, if I'm, like, smiling, I'm laughing. Um, if I'm, like – if I'm throwing pretty well. So, I think those are, like – if you can tell I'm doing that before the game, then I'm probably going to have a good game. And I also think, I also think like all the interceptions I had this year, I'm not mad with at all. I'm not really mad with. And I don't really like some of them I regret, obviously, like the Norton one. I don't know why I threw that ball. <laughs> no one was around him and I threw it right to him. It was like a punt. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. But then, but Johnny keeps getting me the ball back after I make these, these stupid mistakes. But, um, I don't really have any regrets because I think a lot of our offense was going deep this year. And I kind of threw, like, most of my deep balls weren't really intercepted. It was more like the short stuff. So, I, and I don't really – I have, like, regrets on some of the passes, but not too many because we've done pretty good this year. And, like, I guess what I've been doing is working a little bit, so. Mm. Did you throw an interception against Watertown? I um I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Yeah, because I actually have to apologize to you because <clears throat> I don't know if you saw, but I did a uh, a stream. Yeah. Oh wait, no, I did throw one. I did throw one. Oh, you did throw one. You said because you said because I watched a little bit of it and you were saying I bet Danny's gonna <laughs> throw one pick. <laughs> I think. I was laughing because if I was in your shoes, I'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> and and I threw it, and you're like, I was right. <laughs> but I only threw one. Okay, so that, yeah. I remember I got partway through the stream, and I was like, oh, man. I was like, I wasn't mad, but I was like, oh, wow, he hasn't thrown one. Like, no, I look like such a dick because I kept saying. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, you, you know, give some predictions. And I was just trying to be spot on. And I was like, but I will say that the compliment that I give you and it's because I 100% believe in it is I always say um, you're a real competitor. Um, and I think you come from like a family of athletes where that's important. And the example I give is I think it was the Dedham game. It was going pretty shit for you guys, especially in comparison to where the expectations were that you guys are going to roll over Dedham. And mm -hmm. then you had that beautiful throw down the sideline to Johnny. And that was where I was like, Oh, the, both these guys, it was like a third and long, and on your field and I was you know it was a terrible position to be in and I was just like oh these guys can like lock in and fucking make stuff happen so I think you're one of the rare birds in high school football that can throw 
an interception and come back and just sling the ball the very next possession and make fireworks happen. Yeah. Is that, is yeah. that, what do you try to do mentally when you throw a pick? Well, after throwing a pick, I think everyone always think like everyone thinks about it right after, like, especially like yourself, you're, you're just thinking about that interception. Um, I think I keep that in my mind for like two minutes and then everyone else keeps coming up to me. They're telling me just forget about it. Like Henry Murphy's so good at that every single time this whole entire year. Probably thrown, he's like, just forget about it. Don't it doesn't even matter. And he's like, oh, you're all good. Just keep your head up. So I think I think that helps a lot. And then everyone comes up to me and says that um, Coach Ryan doesn't say anything after a throw pick. Well, he does not say anything. He just doesn't say like, why did you do that? He's always like, keep your head up. You're all good. We'll get the next one. So I think that helps a ton with like my confidence and where I'm going to go the next, next, um, next set of plays. Does Henry have a mean side to him? I kind of like feel like that happens when he plays football. He looks, he looks more angry than usual because I feel like he's pretty jovial. And then when he plays football, he looks like a bad man. Um, I don't really know. Cause he's on defense or just like, yeah. Is that, I, mean, I mean, if it's an unfair characterization, is he happy on the field? He looks like he's pissed. Yeah, he does. I think gets in like his game face and gets like mad a little bit. He's in the penalty thing, but he got like one from talking to like the ref in the Bellingham game, I think. And everyone was like pretty surprised. So I think I think is like his game face is different than his like at home and stuff. I think he got, <laughs> yeah, his at home. I think he got 15 against Medway. That was the one game I've got to see in person. Okay, that was the, that was it. Oh, okay. Okay. So it was one fifteen. Yeah. I think that, I don't even know that that one was talking to ref. I think someone told me after he just was cussing, Like he was like, it was like, a yeah, yeah, I think he was just like trying to Griffin. I think him and Griffin were having like a interaction or something. They were like, like, what is this? But they were talking to each other, not to the ref. And then Griffin was like, what is this guy doing? And Henry was, like, saying how bad he was, like, to Griffin. And then he threw it. I think. Oh, God. He was saying how bad he was. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not kind. That's not kind by Henry. For sure not. Um, it seemed like yeah. – uh, we don't have to rehash the whole game, but I watched because I'm an idiot and I didn't, I couldn't find DSC TV stream or NFHS. So I tuned into Swamp Scott during the fourth quarter and I saw a lot of what looked like poor sportsmanship from Swamp Scott, like in their body language, they were waving goodbye to you guys. There were people were getting into yeah. little uh, fights and stuff, I, or, you know, a little back and forth pushing or whatever. It looked like at one point one of the guys was just holding Johnny down at one point for like no reason. Like, were they were they kind of giving a lot of shit to you guys? Yeah, they definitely were. Um, I'd say more like their offense and our defense. I think our defense was a little more chippy than our offense. Um, and then towards the end of the game. I'm not really like sure what happened. I think a lot of stuff was going on, like number 66 or 54 or something. They were kind of getting into it with our players. I think like, Griffin, especially. Um, I don't know if someone's saying like they were like kicking someone or something, but I I would if they got in a fight, I'd get into it. But I it was kind of like a scuffle that I didn't. I knew like nothing was really gonna like come out of that, so I kind of just stayed away. Yeah, you're more quiet. I'd be a lot more afraid of you in a fight. I feel like you'd be the kind of guy to know karate or something. Yeah, I used to box. So. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I, I used to box. Then I got knocked down so hard that I couldn't remember any flavors of ice cream. So my dad had to cut me off from boxing anymore. I think Johnny's telling me about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did yeah, I uh, you were with your dad, you got like knocked out or, or like a concussion, and then your dad's telling you like not to tell your mom. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I said that one time in the rendition of the story to make it funnier. Um, but I don't think he actually yeah, said yeah. that, but but um <laughs> it was definitely funny because it was he was giving me ice cream because I knocked got knocked down. 
he was like, oh, buddy, let's get you a treat or something. And then it just like, it was just an, it was an L day. That was an L day because that was the end of boxing. How long did you box for? Did you get to spar people or was it like one of those fit moms kind of classes where you just kind of hit, touched up the bag with like 20 ounce gloves? Yeah, it was kind of like that. Um, my mom and my dad both boxed. Like there was this thing called Haymakers for Hope. And it was like boxing for cancer. So they would, they trained like for a year and they both like went into their fights and they both knocked out their opponents in like the first round. Wow. Yeah. But I think, and then after that, my dad loved boxing. He was like, why didn't I do this as a kid? This is the best exercise ever. You know, like your back, it's, you just get like in such good shape. Cause it's like, yeah. And it's like forcing your like punch and building muscle. So my dad, was really for the boxing so we'd go in like probably f- four or five times a week and just go to, like these classes and box and then I'd I like I wouldn't spar anyone I'd like move around at the ring with like these like these older guys and like I'd punch them because they were like training so they'd have to like dodge it and stuff so yeah there you go that's crazy yeah. so you have a really athletic family um obviously your sister was a superstar at the 400 hurdles field hockey your dad played college football right where did he play yep. he played at uri he was he played like uh he was a captain his senior year and he played like defensive back and then my mom played field hockey at uri for four years too wow that's incredible is that where they met yeah yeah they met in college who do you think's the best athlete in your family I'd say, I'd say my dad. Interesting. Yeah, he well, he was really into like he was a really good basketball player and he was a quarterback in high school too, and then he got recruited as an as an athlete to go to URI because he, he was like six feet, like one ninety five, so it wasn't like the big quarterback that they needed. And they came out, and the other quarterbacks that they had could throw a little better. And he wasn't like a true thrower. Like he didn't, he didn't really play baseball. He wasn't that good at baseball because his his eyesight wasn't that good. So they moved him to defense. Well, he also played uh, Foxborough. He played at Foxborough, and then he played on defense a lot too. He, like he'd go on quarterback, and then he play safety. So they knew like he was athletic. So they changed. They put him to right to defense when he went to college. Wow, sounds like quite the athlete has he been able to help you out as a quarterback and as a football player and, and teach you a lot of what he knows yeah a ton uh before every game he tells me what to look for when we're looking at their film so we can always like find the, the weaknesses in their defense and like their coverage so, and he's so good at that stuff and he just writes sense and notes gives it to me and then i watch it and it helps so much yeah, and I bet he's got such a unique perspective, not just as a quarterback, but as a defensive back, sort of yeah. spotting the coverage and understanding, like, the weaknesses and what to look for. Do you ever point out, like, a weak player where you're, like, not even just, like, you're just, like, oh, if this kid's on the field, like, he's shit, try to throw the ball at him. Like, when you're doing that pre-snap read, it's not always just, like, oh, like, this receiver's hot, I'm assuming. Sometimes it's, like, well, that kid, that kid looks like he has no business on a football field that's a lot of it sometimes because you can also like film so helpful in determining that like my dad my dad's always like looking at their back pedal and like watching that stuff and that, that's tougher for me because i don't because he's like had so much experience so i just kind of like watch how they like cover and follow with the guys and we have brian we have johnny two of two of the fastest kids in the tvl so i think that's that help backs. What do you think? Like, do you think you would have? Because obviously, you know, as a, a going from sophomore to junior year, you improve a lot as an athlete, just physically maturing. Um, what would your impact be like on defense right now if you were not in? You know indispensable player like if you could play on defense right now like where do you think you'd fit into this defense and what kind of an impact would that have had yeah 
I think if I put on defense, um, I don't know if we could if we were in like cover two and like the the weaker safety and Johnny would be like the stronger safety like going up and making more of the, the tackles because I'm better I'd say I'm better in coverage than I'm at hitting people, um. But yeah, my dad, my dad's pushing for me to try to play defense next year. And then my also my two of my brothers are coming on the team next year. They're they're a little small. Uh, Grant is a is a ninth grader, and then Ronan's an eighth grader. And Ronan, he's a he's a baseball player. He's pretty good at like throwing the ball. And I'd say Grant's like shifty and fast cross player. He's a good point guard in basketball. Mm. So they're good. they're both coming to the team next year. And I think if we have Garrett, we have, we have Ronan Richards, and then we have my brother. So all three of them, they develop as like better quarterbacks over the summer and to next year. And I, and I have like a backup, and we can like teach them the plays so they know what's going on if anything happened. And I think I can, I think I've, I would help on the defense next year. Oh, That's, that'd be like a little bit of a goal. That's interesting today. I thought for like a split second, you were about to talk yourself out of like the starting quarterback job. I thought you were about to be like, oh yeah, like I could just play defense, you know, if one of those guys would take over, but no, that makes a lot of sense. Like if there's a guy that is a TBL level varsity quarterback right there in the wings, that it would be, um, yeah, you could take a little bit more risk having you play on both sides of the ball um, for sure. So is that, do you have uh, three siblings total or is there more? I have three total. Dude, you looked for like a second and thought, <laughs> like you were counting them up in your head or something. Yeah, I was thinking like three, like including me, but then I was like, now we got four, <laughs> but I have three other siblings. All right, well that's better than forgetting them, I guess. Um, but no, I was gonna ask um, about your younger brothers. Are they talented athletes as well? What what kind of sports have they excelled at? I know you met you mentioned their sports, but it, is there any signs of them being like really important to DS sports in the future? Yeah, um, they're both good basketball players. Um, my yeah, my dad like pushed basketball a ton when when he was because well, he played a lot when he was growing up, and that was the sport he loved. So he got us all into basketball at, at an early age. Um, they play all the time. Like they play a lot. Um, they both they both played Needham football because we don't we didn't have a Pee Wee football. Um, like it ended, it ended when I was in eighth grade when we played with midfield. So they both played with Needham because they wanted to play and they were like still kind of, they're like smaller. They're still growing like a lot. So, um, and then Grant is a lacrosse player and he's, I'd say that that's his probably favorite sport that or basketball and Ronan, his favorite sport is baseball and he's pretty good at baseball and he's a lefty. So that that's pretty good for like pitching and batting. Yeah. Interesting. What sport do you think you're best at now? We talked about your favorites, but what do you think you're the best at? I'd say I'm best at baseball. Mm. What are your strengths as a player? I've definitely heard uh, like Danny Sullivan's a really good baseball player. Like what makes you a, a talented athlete on the diamond? I'd say like my versatility because in all like the past three years I've just been catching all my life or I've just been catching like a ton like a, like, a, like so many games I caught the whole high school season like almost every inning and then and a lot of catchers on our team and we didn't have that many outfielders so I changed I didn't change my whole position but I played a lot of, like a ton of outfield and I didn't play outfield all the previous four years or something and it and i played a lot of outfield and I, this is as good as an outfielder as i'm a catcher so i think that helps a lot with like my versatility like ball and then also like my batting got a lot better over the summer like hitting the ball a lot more so i think that, that that's my best attribute of being a baseball player um i had a recent podcast i don't know when it's coming out but um it was with ethan lynch and he was telling me that 
um, I was asking about what sports at DS were going to be big this year. And he said, oh, everyone always talks big game about lacrosse, but people are sleeping on baseball. Do you also anticipate a big season for the baseball team? Yeah, I, I kind of um, – I heard, like, I heard – I'm pretty sure Coach Ryan might have said, like, to someone, but, like, the state – this when the DS baseball team won the state tournament in like 2017 or 2016 or something like the year prior to that season was like what we were this year or last year so and I we have a lot we don't have like too many seniors leaving and we have a lot of guys returning so I think I think we can be pretty good this year what needs to happen for you guys to win a bunch of games? What what people need to come in place at different positions? Yeah, I'd say pitching is probably the biggest thing for like almost every baseball team. Um, because I we have a I can catch we have a catcher and we have kind of a lot of well catcher is one of the most important because you you need just a catcher in general. Good pitchers who can pitch to a, a pretty good catcher. It helps your team a ton, even more than like the offense. I think defense is more important than the offense in baseball. Mm. Um, and then we have a lot of returning guys filling in, in like shortstop, uh, second base, first base, and center field, and like all the outfield. So I think going to be the most important thing this year. So. Yeah, I'm interviewing um, Curtis right after this. Tell me a little bit about him as a baseball player. Yeah, Curtis is Curtis has a super hot bat, which means like he's always getting hits and he always hits it pretty far. Like in batting practice, he's the kid that's like hitting him to the elf, into the woods on our field. Um, wow! And last year, yeah, last year he I think he hurt his shoulder pitching or playing shortstop or something, so he moved to center I think for a lot of the year, and he was a big part of our big part of our outfield but um this year I think it's up to him kind of where he can play because he has a lot of options like where he can play he can play second he can play short he can play center like anywhere in the outfield um and his his bat is huge to our team so he's he's an important part of our team what's the biggest misconception about you um I'd say the biggest misconception about me is that I'm super, like, super quiet. Because I am pretty quiet, but on on sports, like, while I'm playing with sports, I don't think – I'm, like, not – I'm not quiet when I'm in the game. Like, when the game gets going, I start talking, and I get more comfortable, and once I get more comfortable, then I just kind of let it all out. Um, But, like – yeah, I just kind of – I'm, like, I'm really observant. I just, like, notice stuff. And I just, like, take it in and let everyone else do the talking and all that stuff. But I'm I'm not – I'm not a super quiet kid when it comes to, like, playing sports and when I feel comfortable and just, like, letting it all out. <laughs> you have a visitor? <laughs> Brother. <laughs> yeah, bring him in and ask him about all that sports and stuff. I was just saying, yeah. people have uh, – People have the opposite conception about me. I have no idea where they got it from. Um, for hey, sure. you're loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that I won't shut the fuck up, I guess. <laughs> um, no, but that's what I was going to say, actually, is um, like I told you um, how Mary and I were talking at the BC game. I said, oh, I think I'm going to interview Daniel. I said, oh, is he like a quiet guy? That's kind of the, the vibe I get. She said, yeah, a little bit. But uh, since you've come on, I felt like you've been very articulate and well-spoken and you've had a lot to say about your teammates and stuff. So it, it seems like, yeah, when you're comfortable or there's a topic that you're, you know, you feel like you know that you have something to say about, I don't think you're shy at all. Yeah, I think that's, that's kind of what it is. When I know what I'm talking about and I have like a, a line of reasoning and stuff, I think – I can talk for a while. And Merit, Merit's always the one that's telling me I'm so quiet and everything like that. <laughs> she's like, she's always telling me how quiet I am and like how I need to be able to go and speak more. But yeah, I got, I got ripped on by my family for not talking. 
maybe she's just talking over you. I have, yeah, I have an older sister and she has plenty of stuff to say. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. I, I will say Johnny is sometimes the one that can't get a word in edgewise when my family has a discussion because we can all get pretty lively and then Johnny will just get cut out. <laughs> yeah hmm. um i just want to make sure i don't cut curtis off um what would be your advice oh by the way i got a dm um from the swamp scott quarterback i wanted to interview him before the game because i mm -hmm. thought it would hype up the game and then like right after the game he responded and was like i'd love to do it do you think i should still interview him or no king uh -huh. o'brien name on instagram yeah, he followed me. <laughs> Call me right after, right after the game. Right after. So either this guy just didn't log on to Instagram for a week or, like, he <laughs> really wants to rub it in DS's face. And I showed Johnny. I was like, Johnny, this quarterback's – the quarterback for Swamp Scott requested to follow me. He's like, yeah, I already accepted it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this fucking – well, you know, the running back was Xavier. Xavier was yeah. going to come on, and we had a date oh, really? plan. We the Sunday before, the Sunday before the game, we had like a time locked down. Like it was like two p.m. or whatever. And the the guy calls me right before and he says, "Hey, I'm helping my teammates with their homework." <laughs> he says, "I can't come on." I said, "What do you mean you're helping them with your homework?" Well, he's and he goes, "I won't say all of what he said, but he's like he basically said." Um, their term was about to end and that if he didn't help his teammates with their homework, some of them might fail classes and not be able to play football. So he blew me off. And then I tried to like, we tried to make it work and he just kept like making it too difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And I think your podcast is off. Awesome. Like they've helped our team a lot. Like before the, before the games, like the Norton game, I think that was a big one of uh, the Millis one. They were really cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. I love to hear that. I think it it makes it, like, exciting when there's a big game. And I think it's also a thing that <clears throat> never really would have happened before. Like, when our dads were playing high school football, like, you could read a newspaper clipping or maybe, like, if you saw someone playing basketball, too. Like, you might know them from a summer league or something. But, like, there was never – it is such an interactive thing where someone would literally like ask, Hey, what do you think about this other team? And then like the other teams like sitting there like, Oh, what's he going to say about us? I think it's a super yeah. cool thing. Yeah, it is really cool. And I think it helps our team a lot too. Gives us like more. Sorry, I missed that. You yeah. cut out a little bit. Oh, Oh yeah. Your podcast has like helped us a lot and given us a lot of motivation this year. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. No, I wasn't just trying to have you say that again. It literally cut out. We've been having, we've been having Wi-Fi issues. I think the flow would have been even better if the, if the Wi-Fi had been uh, fucking perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Who do you think, who do you think I need to get to hype up? Uh, I mean, I've already talked to two men field football players. Is there anyone I need to get for your sports that I haven't got? Opponents. Sorry, so for, yeah, for DS sports or like for our opponents. I don't know. Who do you want to see? Who do you want to see on the podcast? Who am I sleeping on? In the TVL or at DS, who am I sleeping on? I think like I think a joint one with Mackay and Henry Murphy. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh yeah, the middle brought, linebackers. That brought that got brought up. Um or those two got brought up in the watch party with Tylan and Timmy. Cause I said, who would you rather get hit by? <laughs> and then I, I think we both agreed that Henry looks like a lot scarier than anyone else to get hit by. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm planning one with Henry. I want to do one in person with him after Thanksgiving, but Makai also had cool. a huge season. So I've got to talk to him as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Danny Dimes. Thanks for coming on the young Shakespeare podcast. Thanks for having me. Awesome. That has been this episode of the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Thanks so much for Daniel Sullivan for coming on. Uh, thanks so much to the listeners, and thanks so much to our sponsor, Bank of America. Um, that has been this episode of the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Please tune in for the next podcast.